Good morning. Good looking crowd we've got out this morning. Glad you're here. Uh, by way of announcement, first of all, a big thank you to everybody that helped with the pancake breakfast yesterday and the clothing giveaway. Um, thanks to everybody who came out and supported that. As far as the pancake breakfast, I think uh, I think we had donations total about a thousand bucks. So we appreciate that. Uh, we're going to, in lieu of that, we're going to have a those folks that are signed up to go to that uh, um, museum trip. Uh, we're going to have a very short meeting right after church back here in the back, probably. So uh, please hang around for that. Uh, Brother Steve's got some details that he wants to. Uh, make us aware of, but, but do thank you for that. Uh, we appreciate uh, all the support and the clothing giveaway as well. Uh, the mother-daughter banquet coming up, please sign up on the board today, or no, by next Sunday, sorry. Please sign up by next Sunday, if at all possible, so we can get a count, uh, head count for food. Um, and that is, uh, that'll be on April the 23rd, so, uh, uh, you, uh, you ladies that have not signed up for that, please do so as soon as possible. We appreciate that. Um, don't forget next Sunday we're going to have a, uh, an Easter sunrise service uh, up here uh, at the Life Center. We'll go up on the hill, and then we'll have some. Uh, we'll have a, a quick breakfast, a light breakfast for everybody. Uh, uh, right after that, so uh, be uh, time. The preacher's still working on the exact time for that, so uh, just, um, well, it says 7 a.m. with breakfast following, so uh, I, I, I didn't know if he had uh, made that or not. So uh, so don't forget that next Sunday. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget about Easter service um, next Sunday as well. Please invite your friends and family to come out. Uh, I told uh, the group earlier before Sunday school that that's the single best day that in history that's ever been, uh, uh, that's ever happened here on earth. So uh, be a part of that. Invite somebody to church to join us here uh, for that, for the whole day, start at 7 o'clock in the morning if you want to. Uh, but as well, we probably won't have uh, evening service that uh, uh, next Sunday for families. Is that right, preacher? Okay. That's what we've done in the past, so uh, so invite your friends and family to come out and, and, and spend the day with you uh, here at church as we celebrate Christ's resurrection. So just remember that. Operation Christmas Child items for March are stuffed animals and dolls. Uh, please bring those in and put them out here in the hamper. Um, don't forget, uh, also, uh, Miss Nikki, there's, a, there's a, the uh, address list. From the picture directory, uh, if you uh, that th it's out here on the table beside the candy jar. We need everybody to, to, to proofread their address. If it's if it's correct, initial it. If it's not, correct it. If there's information on there that you don't want on there, please mark it out. But do that ASAP. That's what will be put in the directory, uh, and that's I mean that's the address. Um, that the picture company is going to, to use to print and to mail and uh, all that sort of stuff. So uh, double check that on your way out, uh, please. And don't forget, Awana, still collecting aluminum cans to offset the cost of meals. Uh, bring those cans in a bag, preferably, uh, and put them over here in the van shed. And as we get a load, we'll take them off and uh, those proceeds buy groceries for the for the kitchen staff to serve meals each Wednesday, so uh, don't for, don't forget that. Uh, summer movie night is scheduled for May the 27th. Go ahead and start talking that up. And Vacation Bible School will be uh, July the 11th through the 15th. The, um, the theme for that this year is the winning team, so go ahead and be praying about Bible School, be praying about what your role will be. Um, and I'm sure there'll be uh, sign-up sheets and all, st all sorts of that stuff um, start to surface here very soon. It says winning team. So, not the whining team. Anything else I've uh, forgot or overlooked? 
Any birthdays we want to recognize this past week? No birthday, boy, quite a bunch this morning. Man, wow, you may, you may get to, you may get to drink that whole bottle of water this morning, brother. If our ushers are come, we'll take up our morning offering. <coughs> We'll be singing hymn number 92. If you want to find your place in the hymnal, go ahead and stand and sing. So just a little talk with Jesus. Is that what that is? Hymn number 92. Brother Adam, will you ask the blessing? Pick up our one offering. If you are visiting with us uh, this morning, this is our Wednesday night youth ministry held over in the Life Center across the way uh, on Wednesdays at 6.30 to 8. Um, we have a, um, a group of about 40 leaders that uh, minister to these kids. We have about 100 kids, plus or minus a few each week. Uh, we uh, run three vans through the community and bring these kids in, uh, present them the gospel. Each and every Wednesday, um, they have supper time with the kitchen staff um, and some game time, most importantly, some Bible lesson time with a, uh, in a classroom type environment. And of course, they're on a rotation schedule with uh, Brother Tyler, Brother Stephen with council time um, ever, ever so often. So through all that, they, uh, they are presented the gospel uh, each and every Wednesday, and that is the most important thing of the night, so be praying for these kids, be praying that uh, the Lord prepare their heart to receive to receive that each week, so it's springtime, it's warming up, uh, 
things are kind of getting exciting. Uh, we're uh, making uh, year-end plans, so uh, just be praying that uh, uh, these kids continue to come and we finish strong, finish the year strong, and and uh, may see uh, may see a few more come to know the Lord. So that's uh, that's the most important thing. So our kids will come around and filter through the church and bring your offering up here and put it in, uh, put it in the pl- in the in the bucket here, and the ones that will will sing us a song. Miss Jacqueline, I'm supposed to. Where's she at? She coming? There she is. She's gonna say our right, want a prayer. Jill, you dropped a dollar. Do you think you say, Lord, Lord, help my nanny while she's trying to get better and heal her and help my dad while he is working and help the ones that are sick and lost and now are on prayer list and help my mom while she takes us to school every day. And Jesus now pray, amen. Amen. Come on, kids.
sing this song for my buddy Joe Mack. <coughs> I missed you, Joe Mack. I want to sing this song for you. You help me be good in church. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> It's good to have a good crowd to preach to this morning. I appreciate your presence, and we certainly appreciate the Spirit of God. I believe God's already meeting with us this morning, and appreciate the choir. What a great job that they did this morning. You be praying for them. They're going to be uh, practicing, I'm sure, probably this afternoon at 5 o'clock today. Uh, you be praying for them. Next week, uh, they'll have some special music for us. Uh, don't forget, next week, we're having an uh, Easter sunrise service as we do about every year. That'll start 
at 7 o'clock. We'll meet over in the Life Center. We'll have a time of prayer there. Uh, we'll also have maybe a song or two. Uh, and then we're going to go up, uh, weather permitting. We'll walk up to the first hill, put a cross in the ground there, have a few words, walk up uh, to the second hill. Uh, we're going to celebrate there the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, if we time everything just right, the sun will be breaking through over top of those trees. Last year uh, was a great time praying for that good of weather this year uh, as we share it together. And what an important event. We, uh, it's just uh, central to our faith, the resurrection of Jesus. If there's no resurrection, then we believed in vain. It's all about the resurrection. I'm thankful today to know that Jesus has power over the grave and we don't have anything to fear if we put our faith and trust in Him. Thank God for that. Listen, you invite folks to come out, uh, not only to uh, sunrise service, but also uh, to our regular Sunday morning service. A lot of times folks, uh, maybe uh, Easter and Christmas might be the only time of year uh, that they go to church. So you invite your family, you invite your friends maybe that don't go to church, invite your neighbors, get out there and knock on their door. A lot of times folks realize the importance of going, especially on Resurrection Sunday, and God may really do a work in their lives. So you be, you be praying about that. I uh, also want to mention just again, uh, thank you so much to all those that came out yesterday uh, and supported the uh, breakfast. Some, I think somewhere around the neighborhood of $1,000, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, help us out uh, greatly with the trip that we're getting ready to take. So we appreciate that. Give yourself a round of applause. I appreciate that. And uh, we will be having a meeting for that trip. If, you're, if your name's on the list to go to the trip uh, right after church this morning. If you'll be right here, we're going to have a very quick meeting. Just give a little rundown of how everything is going to go. And you'll want to be there for that. I uh, also want to mention there are several prayer requests this morning. Uh, I want you to be praying for Brother, Brother Joe Mack. He's been struggling some the last few days. You lift him up uh, today. I want you to continue to pray for Brother Levy as he's... Uh, in the hospital now, uh, continue to pray for uh, Brother Adam's uh, uh, family as uh, they uh, have buried uh, Jim. And uh, you keep praying for the Eisenhower family, Joe Eisenhower family. I want you to keep praying uh, for Miss Marceline. Uh, Brother Chris is going to be going in for surgery this week. Uh, that's going to be on Wednesday, and we'll remind you to be praying. But you be praying for him already, bypass surgery. And, I know that uh, it's, uh, they do that every day, but they don't do it every day on Chris Green. So you be praying uh, for Brother Chris, and you be praying for his family. They don't deal with Robin every day either, so you pray, no. <laughs> you pray for those doctors, no. Uh, do want to read this card to you. And before we get going, Brother Todd Montgomery had a great time last week as he was here. Uh, Brother Todd just loved him. Uh, God's got his hand on him, and... Uh, just a sweet man of God, he and his wife Sharon, uh, says, Your little acts of kindness were more like giant acts of awesomeness. Uh, it says, Todd and I just wanted to thank you each for your kindness and encouragement. The Lord, was, uh, Lord used you all to bless us and minister to us in sweet ways. And we greatly appreciate uh, that you allow Him to use you the way that he does. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you uh, for his glory and honor. Todd and Sharon Montgomery, you uh, continue to be praying for Brother Todd, who was very appreciative of the opportunity to be here, and you pray uh, for those ministries and uh, for their ministry. And, and I wonder this morning, as we consider all those that we mentioned, there are so many needs. If I forgot somebody that had an immediate need this morning, very quickly, would you raise your hand and remind them? Miss Rose. Miss Carolyn's not good, doing good. Lift her up, Steve. Jack Greer family. Any others this morning? Very, yes, Miss Shirley. Johnny Wilcox. Miss Margaret. Miss, Miss June. Lift up Miss June. She's unable to be here this morning. Uh, she's been struggling some sick lately. You pray for her and Brother Coy as well. Any others this morning quickly? Miss Gladys. Say again. Nancy Brooks starts her chemo. And Wiley Crowder, he's in the hospital. Any others? 
Miss Judy keep lifting her up. She's sitting in the wrong seat. I turned around, thought she was backing me up this morning, and she was way out there somewhere else. But, but uh, at least she's here. Praise God. Any others? Miss Louise? Okay. Yep. Braden? Who else did you say, Miss Louise? I'm sorry. A brother and a sister is sick. And uh, Brother Daniel's nephew, Braden, uh, he's still very, very sick. Keep praying for him. Any others? Gavin's going to have surgery this week as well. We want to pray for him and pray for little Tanner. He had to get a, he had to have his, uh, had, had to have, Tanner's, turn around, boy, we're talking about you. Had to have him, look here, he's got his cast, he's holding up. Now, he ain't supposed to hit nobody with that. Y'all watch him if he does, and you tell Adam, and he'll take appropriate measures. But you pray for him. Any others? Let's pray together this morning. God, we do thank you for this opportunity to be here. Lord, I thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit that I feel here this morning in your presence. Lord, it's obvious that you're with us and Lord, I realize as I look out over this great number of people, there, there are so many needs this morning. Lord, there's so many folks that's sick. And God, there's so many people that's struggling. There's some, Lord, that's having to, had to give up their loved ones. And Lord, I know that their hearts are heavy. They're hurting this morning. But God, we find so much comfort, so much consolation in the Scripture. As, uh, they've sang this morning about heaven. And Lord, uh, just, just I pray, God, you'd help us to get that in our heart this morning. And God, that we keep our eyes set upon you and, and think about the, the suffering and the shame that, that Jesus went through. Lord, on our behalf, that we would have this hope of glory. Lord, we know that one day we'll stand in your presence. Thank God and every loved one that we We've lost in Jesus. Lord, we'll be reunited. We'll be able to hug them, Lord. We'll be able to hold them there in your presence. And we'll be able to fall at the feet of Jesus and just thank him, God, for his marvelous grace. I, I wasn't deserving of you dying for me, Lord. We, we wasn't deserving of the grace that you've given. But, Father, we thank you so much for the great love that you've shown us in Jesus. God, now help us to be a reflection of that love. Lord, I, I pray for each one in the room this morning, God, that their heart would be stirred in a mighty way. God, I, I pray that as we leave this place, others would see the smile on our face for what Christ has done for us, God, and want to know what we have that might be different from them so that we would have opportunity to point them to you. God, I pray that you'd save people. Lord, I pray that you would just like them this church up this morning. God, may we never be the same. There's some this morning, Lord, that wanted to be here and couldn't. Father, I pray for a meet that you'd help them. God, provide what's necessary. Help us as we study your word. I've got a few things outlined that I believe you've led me to say. But Lord, there ain't nothing any I could ever say that would compare with what you have to say. So I'm, I pray, God, you'd help me to be yielded to you. I, I'm tempted to, uh, to, to wander and stray this morning. Keep me on track. And God, use me even though I'm not worthy. Help these people, Lord. They love you. And Father, I pray that we'd give you glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. You've got a Bible with you this morning. I want you to take that Bible. And I want you to turn to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, and we are closing in on Easter. How many of you can believe that it's Easter already, uh, the end of March? It seems like the, uh, the new year just sprung, but thank God spring is, is, is sprung now. It looks like a little cool tonight, uh, but we're going into uh, just celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and keeping that in our minds. Now, we're not, a lot of years we build up uh, to Easter. We talk about some things maybe uh, leading up to Easter, not haven't been led to do that uh, this year, uh, but we have got some very important things, and, and you're waiting to see what you're turning to, uh, Luke chapter number 5, go ahead and find Luke chapter number 5, beginning in verse 12, and we're going to talk about some very important scripture here this morning, before we do that, how many of you think it's too hot in here, how many of you think it's too cold, how many of you don't think, 
Clint, it's too hot in here. Thank you. Luke number 5, Luke chapter number 5, verse 12. Go ahead and stand with us. The Bible says, And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated this morning. I, I love Andy Griffith. I, how many of you this morning like the Andy Griffith show? I, just always a, a great wholesome so, show and, and, and teaches a lesson so many times. As I, I was thinking about the scripture this morning and actually... Uh, thinking about that, it, I was reminded of an episode that uh, of Andy Griffith. And Michelle uh, kind of laughed at me this morning because I looked that up. And boy, if you got Netflix, ain't that good? You can look at every episode anytime that you want to. You don't want to look at them color episodes, but you look back at the black and white. Now, episode 102, how many of you know which one that was? I'm surprised at y'all that you don't know which one that is. That was, it's a black day for Mayberry. How many of you know what I'm talking about? A black day for Mayberry. That, that was the episode where the, I think the men from the Treasury Department came into town. And uh, they came into Andy's office and, and he wasn't there and they wanted to speak with the sheriff. And, and you know how Barney, he was a little bit nosy, about like a, a good Baptist. And, and he wanted to know uh, what they was doing there and they never would tell him. They said, well, we'll wait, we'll wait. And Andy finally got there and they asked to speak to him alone. And uh, when they talked to Andy, told him what was going on, he called Barney into the room and he said, uh, he said, Barney, he, he, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, listen carefully. He said, I've got some big news. And he began to tell him, he said, there's a gold truck coming through Mayberry. And he said, the gold that's on this truck, he said, it, 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 it's worth about seven million dollars. And he said, now, nobody's going to know this, but just you and I. He said, we're going to be responsible for that truck by the time it hits the county line till the time that it leaves. Just just you and me. And Barney, if you remember right, Barney was just, he didn't know what to do. He said, this is big. This is, this is big. It's the biggest thing that's ever happened in Mayberry. Now, he knew that he had to keep that a secret, but how many of you, if you remember that episode, the secret didn't last very long. You know, he, he kind of, he got on the phone there. I think maybe he had to cancel a date with Juanita or something. He, he called Juanita down to diner. He said, something's going on. He said, it's big. And he said, I've got to cancel our date for tomorrow night. Well, naturally, she asked him, well, what, what's going on? He said, oh, said, you'd never guess. Now, you'd, you'd never guess. Well, go ahead. He said, she started guessing, no, it ain't that, no, it ain't that. He said, he said, he said, there's a, a truck coming through Mayberry. He said, it's worth over seven million dollars. And he said, no, it's not a, it's not a rocket. And he, and, 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 and she wound up guessing that it was a gold truck. And then he, he kind of shut her down after that. And you know, you know what happened after that? It blew up and the whole town came together. And what was supposed to be a surprise turned out that everybody in the town knew it, right? There was a, they had a parade of sorts when the gold truck came through. Everybody knew, and Andy didn't kind of find out till the last minute, that everybody knew when the gold truck was coming. And, and Barney said this. He said, he said, I'm worried, Andy. He said, word might leak out. <laughs> he, he, he said, well, how can it leak out, buddy? He said, he said, it's only you and me that knows. He said, he went down 
to the store and saw Gomer. And Gomer said, Andy, when's the gold truck are coming through? And, I, and Barney said, I reckon word leaked out, he said. But I, I got to thinking about that in light of this scripture. And, and you know, it's, it's hard to put a lid on something exciting, ain't it? You, you think of, of, of the, the small town of Mayberry, even, even Mountain City, you know, that would be big news, it's, especially in 1961, 1962. Seven million dollars was worth a little bit more than than it is today, so it would have been great news. It would have been big news. Now, in much the same way, uh, the gospel or, or, or the preaching of Jesus was big news at the time that he walked the earth. The, the three plus years that he ministered on earth, there were folks that got excited about seeing Jesus. So much so, sometimes when Jesus did a miracle, he tried to get the people not to publish it. He he told this man here, in fact, he said in verse number 14, he said, tell no men, but he said, yo, and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. So he told him to go and don't tell anybody because if he did, there'd be so many people come that he wouldn't even be able to teach the way that he wanted to. But you know what happened. Word leaked out. Word leaked out that something was happening. I got to thinking about that. And I and I wonder many times about our church and, and, and our churches, you know, other churches in the community. Sometimes we may wonder why there's not more excitement. Why why the pews are not more full than they are. And I think maybe sometimes it's because there's not much of anything going on. There's not much to get excited about. But when Jesus does a miracle, you see that there, there's a reason to be excited. Now, if God is really at work in this congregation, now, as I turn around here, I love to see these kids come up here, and it just reminds me of what God is really doing here. When I see all these kids in Awana, it reminds me of what God is doing. Now, I don't believe that you can keep a lid on that. In fact, I, I, and I'm not trying to build up Calvary Baptist Church, but I think we probably got the best ministry in our community uh, that there is here. Be- the best ministry of any church that I know anything about. And I think people come just because they know something is going on. I think they can recognize that something is going on. Now, when we leave this place, do we share that with others? Do you ever tell folks about what's going on in the church? Are you excited or are you stirred up about what's going on? in the church. Certainly this man was stirred up. This leper, he had been cleansed but he got stirred up. He was excited because Jesus did something for him that only Jesus could do. Now, I want to go back and examine this story this morning. I want to pull out just a few truths. Number one, I want you to see the condition of this sinner. Now, now the Bible teaches us that we're all sinners, right? Every one of us, you're a sinner, I'm a sinner. We're all all sinners. That's the truth. So when I'm talking about him, I'm recognizing the fact that he's a sinner. Now, we're comparing leprosy somewhat to the disease of sin today. I want you to keep that in your mind. Now, leprosy was a very dirty sin. It was very, not sin, but it was a very dirty disease. It was a very uh, nasty condition. It would begin with, with sores, maybe, or, or spots around the eyes and, and then on the palm of the hands and then it would spread out and it would bleach the skin it would bleach uh, the hair the hair would turn white you would swell there would be open sores all over your body basically it would get to the point where uh, even your appendages would start to rot off they would rot away from the outside to the inside beginning at the outside and, and seeing how nasty that that, that that sin or that disease looked and going all the way to the bone. It it was a very serious condition. It was a contagious condition and, and listen, it was also a very fatal 
condition. With no treatment, it would end in, of course, taking the life of the one that was infected. Now, it's much like sin today. You can apply that today and, and, and see that it's much like uh, a sin. It continues to eat away. Now, this man was dirty. Now, uh, we have to understand that when he went down the road, not only was he not only was, did he have all these sores and have, have all this sickness and suffering, but he was also cut off from everybody. He, he wasn't supposed to be in town at all. He wasn't supposed to be close. He wasn't supposed to be in a town with walls whatsoever. When he went down the road, he certainly was not supposed to touch anybody or to get close to anybody. In fact, when he walked down the street, he was supposed to shout, unclean, 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 so people knew to stay away from him. It was very easy to see that something was wrong with this man. Now, many times we're able to hide our sin, and it may not be apparent what we struggle with, but every one of us struggles with something. All of us really, in a sense, are unclean, especially to God. Now, uh, we, we all have a, the same thing in common sin, but God doesn't have this. God is, is clean. He is perfect and holy, but we have this sin problem. Now, this man, not only was he dirty, but you find this man was desperate, as well. He had been socially cut off, probably from his family. He had this physical, this horrible physical ailment. He had been cut off from people, no contact with people at all. And then you find that he was desperate. How do you know that? How do you know that he was desperate? Well, they had doctors then. They had physicians then. They had some forms of medication. They had sources of treatment at that time. And certainly he would have tried to get what treatment that he could get. But apparently it did him very little or no good. So this man was desperate. He, he recognized that he was infected. And he realized that Jesus was the only hope that he had. Now... Many times, as a sinner, we don't recognize the fact that we're infected. We don't recognize the fact that our disease is terminal. And we certainly don't recognize the fact that we should be desperate because the truth is we can't do anything about our sinful condition on our own. There's nothing that a man can do. You cannot cleanse yourself from your sin. You, you, you can't live without sin. You've already been infected. In fact, you were born infected. In fact, you could have said from the time of your birth, unclean, unclean. You need what only Jesus can provide. Now, this man understood that he was desperate. He, he cried out to Jesus, and, and, and Jesus being the only one could, that could help him, it was a desperate cry. Now, I remember back, and I've seen some folks do this, and I remember my own self, when I really got a glimpse of how unholy, how unclean that I was, that's when I began to cry out to the Lord. But the truth is, many folks never really get the reality of their own dirtiness, of, of their own sin, of their own unholiness, and, and that's the reason they never cry out to God. They think that they can just do enough good works. If they, if they can just cover their bad with good, then they'll be okay. Now that doesn't work. It never has worked. In fact, that was, a, that was man's idea from the beginning. If you go back to the book of Genesis, chapter number 3, after Adam and Eve sinned there in the garden, what did they do? They made themselves from some fig leaves, didn't they? They tried to cover their sin. They tried to make themselves, and you can imagine, I think I heard Adrian Rogers say one time, you could imagine them uh, uh, trying to comfort each other and console each other, and Adam looking at Eve going, you know, green surely looks good on you. Green looks good. Honey, sure, green sure does look good on you too. But the truth is, listen, man may not have been able to see through that, but God could see right through it. God knew that they were unclean. God knew that they were unholy, and God knows that I've been unclean and unholy. And if you're here today and never been washed in the blood of Jesus, He knows. He knows that you're unclean and you're unholy. Now, you find the condition of this man. He was desperate. 
He was dirty. There was no debating these facts. He understood that, and he took a great chance, really, in coming to Jesus because the truth is he could have been stoned to death. He could have been killed for even being at the place where he was, but he was desperate. He had nowhere else to turn. He had no hope, only Jesus. You see, not only the condition of this sinner here, you find the confidence of this sinner. Look with me at verse number 12 again. It says here, who seeing Jesus fell on his face. This, this indicates humility. He, he fell on his face recognizing how lowly he was and how holy Jesus was. He fell on his face saying, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. You see, he had confidence in Jesus he had confidence in Christ. Even though no one else could help him, he had confidence that, that, that healing was possible. He had confidence not only that healing was possible, but it was that Jesus that could provide this healing. Why would he have had this kind of confidence? Why would this man have known that? Well, it was already known abroad what Jesus did. He could make the dumb to speak. He could make the deaf to hear. He could make the blind to see. He could raise the dead. So if he could do all that, he could cleanse the leper, right? He could do what needed to be done. This man had confidence in Jesus. He knew that Jesus could take care of his problem. If, if Jesus would just speak the word, if Jesus would just lay his hand on him, if Jesus would just think the thought, he could be made clean. And his life could start over. And some of you in this room, you realize how unholy that your life has been. I have the, 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 I guess it's an advantage that nobody here knows my background other than my family. And, and unless you can coax my mama into telling you, you're probably not going to know too much about my bad background. And I'm not going to build it up. But i tell you what, I was unholy. I was unclean. And I was lost without Jesus. But I tell you, when he broke me to the point that I got desperate, and saw my own dirtiness. I had confidence because I had heard the word of God preached and I realized as vile and wicked as I was that Jesus was able to make me clean. Jesus was able to make me whole and I had confidence that I could have hope by trusting in him. Listen, sinner, and we're all sinners. If you've never been saved, you say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. I, I tell you, you, you've never did anything that the blood of Jesus will not cleanse you of. You, you, you've never thought anything that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse you of. You need to realize that today and have confidence in the Savior. You see, this man had confidence. Not only that, you find here he had a commitment. He made a commitment. Jesus told him, said, Jesus told him there in verse 14, he said, or look back at 13, he said, I will be thou clean. And immediately, he says, immediately the leprosy departed from him. But then you find that Jesus made a, he, he commanded this sinner. And this, this sinner committed himself unto God. Now, somewhere here in the midst of Jesus cleansing this man and this man committing himself to the Lord and following his commandments, a lot of seeming believers in Christ get lost. Have you ever noticed that? You understand what I'm talking about? I've seen folks come and they seem desperate. They're emotional. I, I've asked the Lord to save me. And I, I'm, I've, I've prayed that he did. I've been saved. But then they don't do what this man did. Listen, this man proved his salvation by what he did. Jesus said to him in verse number 14, He charged me, he said, Tell no man but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded or for a testimony according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. So he, he told him to go. Now he, he told him to go to the priest. He told him to be obedient to the Bible. 
And there are so many people who say, I, I've been saved, but are not obedient to the Bible. Don't live like it. And there's so many people that I've met that, that don't even try. Have you seen that? No obedience at all to the scriptures. You know, you know how many funerals that I've preached? And to me, the hardest funeral to preach is a funeral for somebody that said that they were a Christian, but yet they never saw an important thing to darken the door of the church. And listen, I'm not to judge anybody's heart. Brother, I can't tell whether somebody's lost or not. You know, and I, I believe there are people probably we think lost that are not. Sometimes people get cold on church because of something's happened to them. Sometimes church people can be the meanest crowd you ever run into in your life. Brother Meeb used to say, two men in the bar out here and get in a fight, and, and tomorrow they'll be the best friends you ever seen. Two men in the church and have a crossword and go two years and won't even speak to each other. He said, that don't make no sense to me, preacher. And he's exactly right. That's not Christian. There's not anything Christian about that. But listen, there are so many people today that don't care anything about the things of God. What, what did Jesus tell him to do? He said, go to the temple. He said, go down to the place of worship. Go down and present yourself there and do according to the Scriptures. And what's the Scriptures tell us to do? Scriptures tells us to be in the house of God. Right? Scriptures tells us we, we need to be a part of the assembly of God. But yet there's so many people that, that don't really want to be involved in a church that say they're Christians. And some of them, maybe, maybe, they, maybe they attend, hit and miss. And, and, and some people just don't make the commitment to the church because they don't want the accountability. Listen, if you're a member of this church, I expect you to be here. How the church expects you to be here? I think God expects you to be here. That's what he said. He said, go down to the temple. Go down to the temple. If you're a Christian, if you've been cleansed, then the things of God is going to mean something to you. Nobody ever had to tell me to go to church when I got saved. Did they have to tell you? I guess not. You're here this morning. But listen, there'll be some night that won't come back. Preacher, you don't know what a night, I, you don't know what a week I had. You don't, know, I, you don't know what a week I had either. But I'll be here. You say, well, preacher, you get paid to come. You don't pay me to come. You don't pay me at all. First, Christ pays me. The Lord takes care of me. Listen, preaching, preaching is the fun part. I love to preach. Ain't no problem with that. You know, the work's the ministry. So this ain't really work. I'd be here anyway. Y'all just a bunch of suckers. I used to pray for, uh, preach for nothing. But you see, the commitment here of this sinner, he went and did what the Lord told him to do. And after that, you'll find his confession. Verse number 15 said this, and I'm going to close with this real quick. It says, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. The Lord told him not to go and speak, but he just couldn't keep his mouth shut. <laughs> Ain't that something? If you look over in Mark, chapter number 1, verse 44 and 45, write that down and go back when you get time. He went and told him. He told him anyway, even though the Lord told him not to. And you say, well, preacher, didn't he violate what the Lord told him to? Yeah, he did. He did. But could you not see how excited the man must have been to be able to tell somebody what God had done? He, he, he probably told, the, one of the reasons Jesus told him to go down to the temple, he wanted him to do it the right way, but he also wanted him to be a witness to those priests he also wanted him to be a witness to those scribes, to those uh, Levites down there at the temple. He, he wanted him to be a witness to God's people of what God can do for you. You know, it's funny how one person sometimes can get stirred up and it stir up everybody else. You know, sometimes maybe you ought to be that person. How excited are you over what God has done for you? How excited have you been over what God... Have you published it abroad? Have you done what this man... You, you see, this man couldn't hit it if he wanted to. It was all over his face. 
I believe as he went down to the temple, I think he had a big smile on his face like some of these kids had this morning. And you, you just can't help but smile back and wonder, well, what, in, what in the world's going on there? You ever meet somebody like that? He's like you see the glory of God all over them. I love it when the choir smiles when they sing. If you can't smile, just sit down. I, you know, I like it when you smile and, and you can see the love of God in the way that you sing. Even if you can't sing that good. I'm not saying you can't, but even if you can't, if you're smiling, showing the love of God. You, you, you see, this man, you find in his confession that it was just hard for him to hide what the Lord had done for him. You know, for some reason, it's so hard for us to show what God has done for us. Do you know we pass from death unto life? Do you, do you know we've seen people saved? Do you, do you not know how many lives that, that God has changed here in this place in times like this, in Awana, in Sunday school, on the van rides? Do you not see how many lives has been touched through vacation Bible school? through things like that, even movie nights, through clothing giveaways. There are about 50 people probably that came through that clothing giveaway yesterday. Some little girl come and was getting right at the end. She looked like she's about to pop. She's pregnant and, came and, and needed some clothes. We'd already packed them away, but they took her upstairs and let her go through and she found some clothes that she, she very much needed. I tell you what, what a testimony that that is that you're willing to do something to help this community. That you're willing to get involved. Your love and your kindness to those strangers is your confession. Just like this man. You see, this man had a renewed hope. You and I have a renewed hope. We don't have to be bogged down with the things of this world. Sure, we're going to have sadness here. Sure, there's going to be sickness here. Sure, there's going to be death here one day. But we don't have to dwell on those things. Listen, we need to get our mind set on heaven. We need to get our mind set on glory and think about all the differences, all the things that we could do here to make a difference in somebody's life. How about this place at this time? You reckon word will leak out here? You reckon word will leak out in the community that God's really doing a, a work here? Well, I'll be honest with you, it won't if we don't go out and tell it. We want the word to get out. We want folks to be excited about what God is doing here. Are you excited about what God is doing in your life? Has God done anything in your life worth exciting you? Maybe you've never received the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Never you, maybe you, you say, preacher, I've been saved, but I never really followed that through. I come to church sometimes, here and there, but I know I don't work like I ought to. I, I know I don't give like I ought to. I know I've never joined the church, and I know I should. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Would you get involved? Listen, folks will never know. The doors will never be, or the pews will never be overflowing. <coughs> If you don't get excited about what God's doing and share it with people around you. Father, I pray that you'd help us this morning. God, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much for the spirit of God. I don't know what's happening here in the hearts of people this morning. Lord, I'm convinced there's probably somebody here. Lord, in fact, I know there's somebody here lost. God, this service has spoken to them. They need to be saved. They're like this leprous man. They're unclean and they know it. They're desperate. There ain't anything they can do about it. I pray that you'd bring them to their knees, convince them of their need for Christ and bring them under such conviction that, Lord, they'd come this morning and say, I need to be saved. And Father, I pray that you'd work in the hearts of our membership this morning. I, I pray each one in the pews would be stirred up to move forward, that they'd be excited when they leave. God, that they'd come back here again tonight to get another dose. Lord, I pray that when they go to work tomorrow, they'd talk about the wonderful works of Jesus, not about how good their preacher is. God, it ain't about pride, not about how good the, the choir was yesterday, but just how good the Lord is.
us, what He's done for us, that He spoke to us, that He gave His Son that we could have life. We have so much to be excited for. I pray the church would be moved today. For somebody here needs to make a commitment, Lord, whether that's uh, receiving you as their Savior, whether that's getting involved in a ministry, whether that's coming forward and saying, I need to join this church. I want to get involved. Lord, I pray you'd convince them to do it today, to get off the sidelines and get involved in what you're doing. Father, we need to help. I pray you'd move them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll stand to your feet. Do you need to come this morning? Are there any this morning? Do you need to come? Maybe you want to pray for God to stir your heart. That you'd get excited and word would leak out in the community. Do you want to come this morning? Just pray God to help you with that. you want to come this morning to be saved? Do you feel dirty and desperate? Do you want to come and get down on your knees this morning and say, Lord, I, I want you to do a work in my heart that only you can do. God, cleanse me and make me new. Give me a renewed hope. God, help me. Do you need to come this morning and just get on your knees and say, Lord, I know you've saved me, but I've not done what I should do every time. God, I want to commit myself to you right here. I want you to help me to do your will, to do your business. You here this morning, you say, Lord, I, I hadn't thought that I was going to join another church. I've been reluctant. But I see right now I've made a mistake. As God's bringing you under conviction this morning, would you come? Do you need to join this love and work and fellowship? Do you need to get involved? Please come. Would you come? Is God speaking to your heart? Is He talking to you now? Will you be obedient? If He's saying it, why are you holding back? Don't come to please the preacher. Don't come to please your mate. Come this morning to please the Lord. Is He dealing with you? Do you know that you need to be at this altar? Lord, I'm not sure. There's a burden on my heart this morning. I'm not, I'm not, you may not even be sure what the burden is. Would you come to this altar? Lord, whatever you say to me, I'll do it. Would you come this morning? Would you pray like that? Lord, I feel stirred. I feel burdened. Speak to me now and I'll do it. Would you bow? Would you fall on your face? Would you fall on your face this morning? Say, Lord, I'll do it. Do you need to come? Don't wait. Some pray. There's room. Any others this morning? Any others? There's time for you to come. Any others? appreciate you coming this morning. I tell you, God has really been with us. I might not be much of a preacher, but I tell you what, He sure is a good God, ain't He? Amen. He sure is. We owe Him a lot of praise. We owe Him glory this morning. I pray you come on back and join us tonight. If you're not used to coming on Sunday night, please make the, uh, make the effort to come out. I believe God will bless you, and I promise you I'll let you go by 7.30, 8 o'clock uh, this evening. If you come on back tonight, don't forget choir practice tonight at 5 o'clock. Uh, is there anything else we need to mention before we leave? Sign-ups for the mother-daughter banquet that's out here uh, in the hall. You want to sign up for that. Going to have a great time. Miss Kim Hemmer could be coming. 
uh, to leave the ladies. Uh, the men will be cooking and serving you. Uh, so if you, if, if you don't sign up for nothing else, you're going to have a good meal. And you're going to have clean them. Make sure you got good service, won't you, clean them? That's right. Meet him. Meet him for our trip. Need to have that right here after the service. Thank you all for coming this morning. Oh, oh, check those addresses back there too. Now, make sure you don't leave here before you get all this done. Do we need to make a list? Make sure you check that before you leave because that's going to go in the bulletin. Appreciate you coming. Dale, would you close us in prayer?